It's the show of the week. Hello, welcome back to Show of the Week. You know, I've said a couple times on this channel that I never want to become a critic. And while I definitely wholeheartedly feel that sentiment, I've never really thought about exactly what that means. This is in the front of my mind for two reasons. The first being that my Mistcast series, as they work their way up the YouTube search algorithms, I get more and more negative comments from people who disagree with me, whom I love. I love when people disagree with me, but they're disagreeing with my own critical opinion of these actresses' performances. That's one tick down the road towards being a critic, and that scares me a little bit. And two, as I vet shows for show of the week to do this with them, I never want to do a show where the only things I have to say about it are largely negative. So if it's a show where the only thing interesting about it is the backstage drama that keeps unfolding that costs the show millions and millions of dollars, I don't want to do that. Or if it's a show that seems to almost border on the offensive, I don't want to do that. And now I reach my struggle today with Finding Neverland. I like it. Kind of? This is not a bad musical. I've listened to bad musicals, and, you know, everyone, you find the things you like about them, and even they become less bad musicals. By no means is Finding Neverland a misguided or poorly crafted musical. But yet it's clear just from the cast album that Th this show is, well, it's kind of one note. Like, almost literally, all the songs feel like a kind of contemporary, run-of-the-mill radio pop songs. And not the ones that are catchy, but the ones that they play in between the ones that are catchy. And really, that's not even much of an exaggeration, because they released that teaser album of all the songs from this show sung by popular pop stars. And that just doesn't work with a musical, right? Right? I mean, I, I'm all for a good pop song, but you need levels in your musical. You have to bring us up and you have to let us down. And not every song in a musical has to be a really catchy song. There are exceptions, of course, but you have to let some of the songs in your show be about the plot, be a, in between the big dramatic love songs or the character motivation songs, and Finding Neverland Everything seems to be just competing for a space of importance, and when everything wants to be important, nothing's important. And then that whole contemporary pop musical motif is set against this turn of the last century Britain, and the whole musical just starts to suffocate in its own anachronism. But I still liked it. The staging looks inspired. It's got a great, wonderfully moving story centered around one of my favorite works of fiction that has ever existed, both the Peter Pan book and the original play and pretty much any other adaptation that has been spawned out of that. Plus, when the pop songs land at the right place or venture out into the more musical theatery world, like in play, or when your feet don't touch the ground, or uh, the world is upside down. I like these songs, but then the critical analysis part of my brain storms off in the other direction and, and like sits in a corner and goes, harumph, no! And I'm stuck somewhere in the middle talking into a camera in my empty apartment. Finding Neverland. I think I like it. I'll see you next week. I'd apologize to the critics in the world, but newspapers are a dying art form, and most people get the reviews of musicals off of Twitter anyway nowadays, so, you know, I don't feel that bad.